This is Jared Bookman from NYU Langone Orthopedics. We'll be presenting on thumb basal joint arthroscopy using a 2 millimeter needle arthroscope. The authors and any relevant disclosures can be seen here. The arthroscopy of the thumb, trapeziometacarpal, or basal joint is one of the more recent advancements in small joint arthroscopy. It was first described in 1996 for the use and management of early arthritis, and techniques have been refined and indications expanded since. Current indications for arthroscopy of the thumb trapeziometacarpal joint include early stage arthritis, synovitis, loose bodies, and as an adjunct to management of Bennett fractures. We demonstrated the technique, feasibility, and safety of using a novel 2 millimeter arthroscope for arthroscopy of the trapeziometacarpal joint in the thumb in early stage arthritis. The anatomy and portals uh, are very relevant here. The 1R portal, or dorsal radial, is just radial to the abductor pollicis longus and is the starting portal and primary viewing portal. Additional portals are the 1U and thenar portals, which are based off of landmarks of the abductor pollicis longus. We present the case of a 42-year-old right-hand dominant female with several months of atraumatic pain at the base of the left thumb, worse with gripping and pinching activities. Examination is notable for painful carbometacarpal grind testing, pain with pinching, and a stable thumb ray. Imaging is notable for very early arthritic changes with subtle joint space widening, eaton littler stage 1 osteoarthritis. Her pain persisted despite non-operative treatment. She was indicated for arthroscopic debridement of the thumb basal joint. On intraoperative exam, laxity of the trapeziometacarpal joint is noted. Patient's position supine with a hand table and a standard wrist arthroscopy tower. The CMC joint is palpated and portals are marked. The 1R, 1U, and thenar portals are marked using the APLs, the primary landmark. Surface anatomy markings are confirmed on fluoroscopy. The thumb is supported with a single nylon finger trap with 5 to 10 pounds of traction. The arm is pronated so that the dorsum of the hand is facing the surgeon. The portal sites are first injected with lidocaine with epinephrine for a hemostatic effect. Needle is inserted into the 1R portal. Fluid was injected and there was free flow of saline to confirm that we were in the joint space. Then the portal was established with the use of a small hemostat. Diagnostic arthroscopy is performed using wet arthroscopy with manual inflow and gravity outflow. The dorsum is to the left of the screen and volar to the right. An osteochondral loose body is noted off the metacarpal base. A needle is inserted into the 1U portal under direct arthroscopic visualization. Dorsal and volar synovitis, a loose osteochondral flap, and grade 2 chondral changes of the metacarpal base are noted. The loose body is removed, and the synovitis and any loose osteochondral flaps are debrided using an arthroscopic shaver. A trans thenar portal is made under direct visualization, viewing is carried out from that portal, and radiofrequency thermal probe is used on the volar surface of the joint just deep to the anterior oblique ligament, which can now be visualized. Thermal capsulography of the volar capsule and anterior oblique ligament is performed due to its theoretical benefit of further stabilizing the joint. A third portal is used for outflow to avoid excessive heat with the radiofrequency probe. Finally, viewing is carried out from the 1U portal, which affords excellent visualization of the metacarpal, trapezium, and volar oblique ligament. Final debridement is carried out from the 1R portal. Wounds are closed, and the extremity is placed into a dry sterile bandage and short-arm thumb spica splint. Postoperatively, the patient reported that her pain has improved considerably, with only occasional VAS 1-3 to dull pain. She's returned to work and intermittently uses a thumb spica splint as needed. She has 30 degrees of palmar abduction as compared to 40 degrees on the contralateral hand. Pinch strength is 75% of the contralateral hand. Wang and Ho in 2017 reported on the largest series of arthroscopic basal joint debridement, with 76 cases followed for an average of 59 months postoperatively. 91% of patients had some degree of pain relief, and 45% report good to excellent long-lasting pain relief, slight improvement of abduction, and preserved grip and pinch strength. References can be seen here. Thank you.